Hey guys, it's Saria. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be um, three Dollar Tree crafts that I made. Two of these do have kind of Disney inspiration behind them and then one of them doesn't but I just think it's a cool thing to make from Dollar Tree and you can customize it however you want. I don't know, I just feel like Dollar Tree sometimes is one of those things where it's almost overwhelming when you walk in and you're like, I know I can DIY a bunch of stuff in the store but I don't know what to do. <laughs> So I tried to come up with some things that were a little bit less obviously Disney and pretty simple for a craft urban skill level. So um, with that, let's jump into the tutorial. So craft number one is going to be using this little wooden tray that I did pick up from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to be using this to hold my glasses and my TV remote in my bedroom because they just, they need somewhere specific that they live. So I am going to paint this all white. I would suggest sanding this down um, if yours feels kind of rough. It just helps everything adhere to it a little bit better. Um, mine was actually pretty smooth, but I have used these before and they've needed sanding. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree sponge brush and then I am using the Rust-Oleum white white chalk paint, um, but you can always use acrylic paint, you just might need a couple extra coats of it. And then I'm just going to cover the whole thing. I don't paint the bottom because you're not going to see it, but if that's going to bug you, then obviously paint the bottom. After the white paint dried, I did decide to distress this by using my gray Waverly chalk paint. It's the exact color is called Elephant, but any gray paint would work for this. Acrylic paint works totally fine. Um, and I'm just taking a kind of like bristled brush and you just want to dip it into the paint and then wipe off most of the excess on like a scrap piece of paper or something. And then you literally it just brush it on to give it kind of a distressed look. Now you guys can see I've got some spots that are a little bit too heavy. I actually didn't do anything to fix that because I realized that the scrap of paper I'm going to add is going to cover that up. But you guys can see me wiping off the excess paint on that scrap piece of paper up in the top of the screen and then just taking it and brushing it along the edges of the tray. Um, I did try to go a little bit heavier on anywhere where there was a ledge, so like on the ledges of the handles and even on the inner circle of that handle right there. Um, but just do this to your liking. If you want it a little bit less or a little bit more, that's total personal preference. Just so you guys know, if you do get a little bit heavy handed, I know I said I wasn't gonna fix this, but I think I went back and decided to, just to show you guys, you can always take some sandpaper and just really lightly go over it and it immediately dulls it down. So if you do go a little heavy, that's totally okay. Um, you don't need to repaint the entire thing. Just take a little sandpaper and just um, dilute it, if you will. And then once my paint is all dry, I'm going to be using this really cute scrapbook paper that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I got four sheets for a dollar, which is such a good deal for cute uh, scrapbook paper. So I'm going to be placing this down in the bottom of the tray. So I flipped my tray upside down and then I'm putting my paper into the indent on the bottom and just pushing down with the eraser of a pencil to crease it so that I know exactly what size to cut my paper to in order to put it on the inside of the tray. I did choose this paper specifically because my bedroom is up themed and I thought that this went really well with the, you know, adventures out there kind of concept. So next we are going to actually attach the scrapbook paper to the tray and you're just going to be doing with this with this with some Mod Podge. So obviously cut out your tracing of the paper that you are choosing to use. Something cute I thought about this was that this would be really easy to orient toward a holiday. So if you wanted like one for Christmas time, one for um, Thanksgiving or Halloween, and then maybe one for summer, it would be really, really easy to swap these out and use whatever paper you're wanting to use. Um, so I'm just testing to make sure that it fits and it does. So I'm going to add a pretty generous amount of my Dollar Tree Mod Podge to the insert of the tray, like the inside of the tray, and then I'm just going to use a Dollar Tree sponge brush to spread that out. Once I feel like I have a pretty good coating, then I will place down my scrapbook paper 
and make sure you start on one end and kind of work your way out or start in the center and then work your way toward the edges but you just want to make sure that you're not getting any bubbles or anything and then I am taking that exact same sponge brush and I'm going to really try to press down the edges I did end up using my finger to do this as well just to make sure that I got those edges really well attached um, you're also going to want to add another layer of Mod Podge onto the top of this. This is going to stop it from peeling or getting scuffed up or, you know, anything hurting it basically. It's going to make it last a lot longer. So don't be afraid to do this. It's not going to hurt the paper, I promise. Um, just add a pretty good amount and then use that sponge brush to spread it out. And then I like to go over it again with my fingers just to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles in it and smooth it out the best that I can. Now the final step that I chose to take was to also distress the uh, scrapbook paper. So I thought that it looked a little bit too new compared to the rest of the tray. So I just did the exact same dry brushing method where I took my elephant gray chalk paint and dipped my brush in it, wiped off most of the excess, and then just kind of dry brush it all over the paper. I really focused on the edges um, to give it kind of like a worn look. Um, that's just kind of a tip if you want something to look more realistically worn is to focus on the edges and the creases. This is what my tray looked like once it was all done. Again, sorry about the lighting. I tend to film like a step a day <laughs> and this is at night. Um, and then these are the edges of the tray. Again, I did not paint the bottom, but you always could. And if you wanted to, you could also add feet to the bottom of your tray using little beads like these. So I did not do this step. I didn't feel the need to put feet on mine, but I do have these beads. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys. You could always just glue these on with a little bit of hot glue. Um, if you wanted to paint them, you could, or you could just leave them that natural wood color. Um, and then you'd be able to just flip it over and it would have little feet on it. Thank you guys so much for popping in on my channel. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you. And if you are new, I appreciate you as well. Please hit that subscribe button for more Disney content. For the next craft, I'm going to be taking these stretched canvases. They do have these in different sizes. I'm going to be using the 5 by 7 size. I did grab four of them. And I'm going to cut the canvas off of these and be making a little wooden uh, framed window. So you're just going to need a box cutter or an X-Acto knife and you're going to uh, flip this over and just kind of cut down the center and then you're literally just going to tear off the canvas. This was so easy to do. Um, obviously be gentle with it. You don't want to break your frame um, and these being Dollar Tree frames, I, I don't know how much pulling they can withstand. Mine didn't budge but um, always just be careful because you are dealing with Dollar Tree products. Um, and then if any of your staples end up sticking out at the end, you can always take some needle nose pliers and remove them. Now to get an even coating of the color, I did decide to paint mine before attaching them. So I'm just using the Rust-Oleum white chalk paint for this. I did only have to do one coat of this paint, which is a huge benefit to using chalk paint. You can always use acrylic paint. You just probably will have to do more than one coat. And then I'm just using a Dollar Tree sponge brush. Be sure to coat it all evenly and make sure you get within the creases. I would also do the tops and the bottoms and the sides because you don't totally know which one's getting glued to which right now. Um, so you don't want like the wood to be poking out. And then obviously just paint all of them and we'll move on to the next step. So once that paint is dried, you can go ahead and attach these. I would suggest laying them out first because mm, these aren't perfect rectangles. There's just little imperfections on them that do make them a little bit harder. So you need to know which ones fit best together. Um, I'm gonna be attaching these using some E6000 for a long hold and then some hot glue for an instant hold. So I'm just applying both of those glues and then carefully attaching the top and bottom of the first two frames. And I'm going to hold these here just long enough for the hot glue to dry. The E6000 will need to set overnight, but the hot glue will dry in just, you know, like a minute. And then I'm just going to repeat this step on the other two frames and then obviously I'll attach the two parts together to make one solid frame. 
If your frames do not perfectly align, that's okay, guys. Um, I think the whole point of this is that it looks kind of distressed and older and very farmhouse. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying if it doesn't perfectly line up, it's okay. Most of the time you can kind of hide the imperfections. Um, the other little tip I guess that I have for you guys is I keep Q-tips close by to wipe off any glue that squeezes out. Um, and then I also, when I'm attaching these, I tried to start at the front and then press down on the back, if that makes sense. That way if the glue oozes out, it comes out the back of the frame and not the front. And the last step will be attaching these two pieces together. Well, actually, that's not the last step. Stay tuned. Once I had all the pieces completely attached, I just went in with my white chalk paint and touched up any spots I might have missed if the wood was exposed. And then the next step is going to be distressing. So this is the same technique that I used in the first craft of this video, which is just dry brushing. I just took that same gray elephant chalk paint, um, dipped my brush in it lightly, wiped off the excess, and then just dry brushed it all around the picture frames. Or canvas frame? The window. <laughs> And that is the last step for the window. Once that's all dry, you can display it however you like. I do think I'm gonna have some future tutorials coming out with a um, how to add to this kind of a theme. So stay tuned for that. The third and final craft is using these home shaped pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to apologize now because I lost about 50% of the footage on this, so I'm going to try to walk you through it as best I can with the footage that I have. But I'm gonna start off with the um, smaller home shaped <laughs> pieces I guess and I'm just snipping off the little wooden ball that was attached on them now for the three shadow boxes that are actually like inserts um, you can pop the backs of these out I don't know why I didn't try I actually used painters tape taped them off and painted them that way it would be a thousand times faster for you guys just to pop off the back and paint it or pop off the back and add some scrapbook paper or something like that. Um, the reason I say it took forever is because these these colors on this backing are very vibrant and it took about four, I think four coats of white chalk paint. Um, acrylic paint I did try, it didn't cover a darn thing. So um, it's totally your choice. You can do what I did and painters tape it and then just use you know four or five <laughs> coats of white chalk paint or you can pop off the back and even just popping off the back to paint it would be easier than what I did. So I'm just trying to help you guys learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Now for the second home looking piece, I don't know what to call these, I'm sorry guys, I did use painter's tape again, and I am just going to be painting over that little gray uh, block on the front. I do love how this looks. I actually have a third one of these that I just display as is because I think it's really cute. But for this project, I did want to DIY it. So I'm just painting over that one coat of my gray elephant Waverly chalk paint and let it dry and it's good to go for the next step. I wanted to show you guys this is what it looked like after one coat of the white chalk paint so now I'm going in and doing a second coat but again I believe it took me three or four coats to get this completely covered up. And then we are almost to the end of what I have for this footage, which makes me super sad, but I pulled off the painter's tape on these houses and the other houses. And next I'm gonna show you guys the final product and just walk you through what the other steps I did on this particular project was. Again, this makes me super sad I lost the footage because this was my favorite piece that I made in this video. 
Okay, so I'm back up here because I wanted to show you guys the piece like in my hands because I want you to guess the little I want you guys to see how large this piece is considering it's from Dollar Tree and it only cost me a few dollars to make. Um, but it's like a larger home decor piece, so I thought that was pretty cool. I am <laughs> you guys, I'm so sad I lost this footage and I wasn't gonna post this DIY because I lost half the footage, but also I thought this was so cute. I was like, I don't wanna I don't want to not share this, so I hope this is okay, but I'm going to like explain what I did. So you guys can see I painted everything. Um, the details within, so like the lettering on here, I cut that out on my silhouette machine. And the phrase I chose to use was, laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. And that's a quote by Walt Disney, so I really loved it. Um, and I used um, two different fonts. I believe this one is Grand Hotel and the one at the center is Lemon Drop. Um, Lemon Drop is one of my favorite fonts. By the way, I use it all that time. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, I just think it's super cute. Anyway, I did use my silhouette machine to cut vinyl out for these letters. However, um, I'm gonna talk about what uh, the, this little leaf design is down here in a second as a Dollar Tree option. You also totally have the option of using Dollar Tree stickers. I am a huge proponent of Dollar Tree stickers. I think they're fantastic. They have tons of really different and uh, really different, really cool um, fonts and colors and designs and just different um, options for you. So if you wanted to do something like this but don't have a die cut machine, I think you totally can still do this. You also could stencil the letters. You could hand paint the letters. Um, Oh, I totally forgot, there I am. I also have on my channel a tutorial where I show you guys how to print out any text, any text you want and um, transfer it onto to anything. So um, basically you print it out and you scribble on the back with a pencil and then you press down on it Anyway, watch the tutorial. I'm just telling you guys I have ways for you to do this if you don't have a die cut machine. I don't want that to stop you. Um, anyway, so the little Mickey heads are also cut out with my silhouette machine. Again, you can paint them, you can use stickers, all kinds of things. Um, now I did cut off the little one little wooden bead that came on these middle ones because I just thought it looked like not great. I don't know. I wasn't like super impressed by it. So I decided to add my own wooden beads. Um, so in the order of events, once these all had dried, I went ahead and adhered all of the lettering to these um, using transfer paper. But then these center pieces, I, I strung these wooden beads onto some jute twine, which is this twine right here, wrapped it around and glued it on, and that's all before putting all five pieces together. Um, then I added these little rub-on transfers for this leaf design. These rub-on transfers are amazing and Dollar Tree has a bunch of different options of them now. They are, they're very cool, they're not vinyl, um, but basically it's like a sticker, you press it down, you rub it with your finger and when you peel the tape back it just like attaches to what you put it on. Um, it is a rub-on transfer. It transfers onto where it is rubbed. <laughs> Um, it's really cool though and they have a bunch of different options so I just liked the little detail that that added to the bottom and then that was the last step before attaching all five together. To attach all five together I again did hot glue and E6000. I would not just do hot glue. I don't think you're going to get enough of a permanent hold but as you guys can see I've been like wiggling this thing around the whole time. It's very sturdy, very well held together. So I, I sing E6000's praises because I really do love it. However, if you're trying to stick to Dollar Tree, they did come out with their own epoxy glue, which is a very strong super glue. So you could also try that if you're not wanting to buy like a whole bottle of E6000. You could get that or you could get their super glue. Um, just use something other than only hot glue. But that's pretty much it for this piece. So paint it white in the centers, um, add some wooden beads, and then add the text that you want in the center and glue it all together. It really is a simple tutorial, but I just loved how this came out so much and I was so sad. But I didn't have the full tutorial for you guys. I hope that didn't bother any of you. I hope you weren't like, oh wow, Saria, we don't rob us of a tutorial. Um, but I, again, I really was proud of the piece. I love it. It's, it's like displayed openly in my home and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help me know what, which content you guys love the most. Um, and I love doing um, these kind of videos where it's like 
multiple tutorials in one, but I do have to compile them over time, and I want to know that when I'm doing that, that it's something you guys actually want to see. So if you could give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, it really helps my channel grow and continue to um, pop out more videos for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.